Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. You can find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin. You can find my awesome co-host, Dale, over on Twitter at Dynasty underscore Dale. And we're excited because this week we have a coaching roundup. We're going to be talking about all the coaches that are new head coaches, new OCs across the league, and the fantasy impacts. So, in full transparency, this is coming out on Monday. Um, we're recording a little bit early. If you've been following, I did have a cold uh, last week, and I'm still we're recording this early, so I still have the cold. Hopefully, by the next one, I will uh, be a little bit more recovered. But um, yeah, so if my voice gives out at all during this first episode, I apologize. But no, we're uh, we're going to be jumping into some coaches. So, what are your thoughts, Dale? You, you liking these coaches? How you doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, I like I like the majority of these coaches, and there are also some very interesting coaching changes that yes, yeah, sir. I don't I don't really like. <laughs> so, we'll save them for uh, that episode. I think we both yeah, like this episode. one, so we're gonna kick it off with probably the most substantial. I would say change, um, coaching, head coaching change so far. So, you know, all in all, there's five, um, there's five openings for head coaches. You got Denver, you've got the Carolina Panthers, you've got Arizona, Indy and Houston. So at the time of recording this, Indy and Arizona still have not filled their, their openings at all. So we might not have a, uh, we'll have to, we might have to wait another week to get those two out at this point. It's right. just ridiculous how long they're dragging their feet on this. Now, Arizona makes a little bit of sense because supposedly nobody wants to play with that roster because it sucks. And then they also don't want to play with Kyler, which yep, not great. Um, so there's that. But, you know, they'll hopefully hopefully have it filled by, by next week. I guess we'll find out. Um, but the most impactful one, the only guy that wasn't signed as a free agent, um, for a head coach mm-hmm. is going to be Sean Payton to the Denver Broncos coming over via trade from the New Orleans Saints. Now, the full trade terms were the number 29 overall pick in this year's draft um, and a third round, or sorry, a second rounder next year in the 2024 draft for Sean Payton and a 2024 third round pick. So they, they kind of did a two for three swap next year and mm-hmm. then gave up the 29th overall pick for Sean Payton. So the first thing I want to talk about is I've seen so many people bad mouthing this trade for a coach. It's like, why would you give up any assets whatsoever for a coach? Sean Payton is a Hall of Fame coach, first off. Like, yeah. just just to be 100%, clear there. 100%. Yep. So, you know, the last couple coaches that have gotten traded the last couple years, it hasn't been for anything much, you know, like a fifth-round pick or third-round pick or something like that. But, you know, it's very, very rare that you're going to be able to get a Hall of Fame coach. You know, the biggest problem with the Denver Broncos in 2022 was we had no idea if it was Nathaniel Hackett that was the problem or Russell Wilson that was the problem. And, you know... I can confidently say Sean Payton will not be the problem. This offense is going to click if it is not, you know, as long as Russell Wilson can still play quarterback, this offense is going to click. So um, that's the first thing. I do not understand. What is the 29th overall pick? You're more likely to bust on that pick than to hit a good player, and instead you're getting a Hall of Fame coach. You know, they don't. you yeah. can't just get these guys. And that's the one thing, too. I don't think a lot of people understand with coaches – you know, if a player retires, the team owns the rights to that player forever until they come back and f- complete their contract with them. The the coaches, they sign a contract that's for a certain amount of time. Um, that's a little bit different than the players. Why it's different, I don't really know, but it's probably to stop people from sitting out for a couple years and then just leaving the team for free. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, coaches, their contracts expire. Sean Payton would not be a free agent until after. After the 2024 season, so going into 2025, you would have to wait for him for two more years. He's not coaching for the New Orleans Saints. He's already come out and said he's done with that team. He's not coming back. Mm Mm-hmm. So, if he's done, and if you want a Hall of Fame coach anytime in the Russell Wilson era to kind of fix him and try and make this make this offense go again, you have to give something up. So, what are your thoughts on the trade? First off. Um, I honestly think it's a, a, a really good trade. You know, um, 
I believe the hit rate on first round picks is about 50%. And it's a little I think, less than, I think it's like 45, but yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's around there. And I think the odds of hitting on Sean Payton, at least for a couple of years are more than 50%. Yeah. He's a honesty. young guy too. So, like he's young. Yeah. He, 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 yeah, he is pretty young. And you know, um, I, I, I think, I think that's a very fair trade for him. You know, I, I have no qualms about that. Um, you know, I, I think his contract's pretty inter- interesting. Like I saw that he got like a five-year deal with like, it's, it's, it's like 18 million a year is what I saw. Which yeah. Is, it's a lot of money, which, which is, which is a lot of money. Like, <laughs> they got to compete with Fox. Yeah. I was, I was, I was just about to say like, I, I kind of wonder how much TV money he was, it was getting. probably close, like you know? 15. So, uh, so so I guess if you're a Broncos fan, like you need to go support Walmart because that's who's paying. For <laughs> yep. So I think they're doing all right. I think they're doing all right. Um, yeah. But I mean, if you're not going to support Walmart, you're going to support Meyer. You're going to support uh, Amazon. So you're kind of picking yeah, exactly. <laughs> which devil do you want to support there? So, um, exactly. yeah, it's pretty anyway. rough. <laughs> so the biggest thing with Sean Payton coming over again, he's a hall of famer. You know, you look at what he was able to do with New Orleans. His first year as a coach, I believe, they went and they won the Super Bowl, the first ever Super Bowl for the New Orleans Saints back in '09. I didn't actually realize. Yeah. I was looking no, at that. No, it, it was it, it was it was actually Sean Payton started in '06 right out. It was okay, like right okay. after Hurricane Katrina. Okay, and then and 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 then they got Drew Brees. In in, in 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 a trade with the Chargers, and then that was in '06. Man, I do not remember that. That, that, was, that was in that was in '06. It was a Oof. long, long time ago. That is Calvin a very long me. time ago. Very long time ago. Yes. yes. And the funny so, thing about that is too. So you know, everyone looks at Drew Brees as a Hall of Famer now, but he was not considered a great player when he got traded from the Chargers. So you know what what Sean Payton was able to do with with Drew Brees and fix him. That's why people are very excited about what he can do with Russ and and letting him cook in this offense. Um, but yeah, he got New Orleans their very their only Super Bowl victory in their history of the franchise, and they were competitive like almost every year. Now say what you will, <laughs> hopefully the GM doesn't do the same kind of crap where they just sell the entire future forever that you're living on right. on the credit card. But you know, right. as long as they can keep that in check. Right. No, I, I agree. Well, that and and that you don't have your defensive coordinator, you know, uh, trying to incentivize players and uh, you know, bounty gate and, and, yeah. and, and, and bounty gate. Yep. So, you know, uh, yeah. So, you know, I really like Sean Payton. You know, I mean, I mean, he he he, he is a proven winner, like his records, 152 and 89. Yep. In his, you know, you know and they were like always competitive, plus. always. Yes. All, always competitive. Always, always at least around 500, like, mm-hmm. like even on his bad years, he was still seven and nine, yep. you know, um, you know, he has really good off- offensive schemes. I am very excited for all the wide receivers there, yep. which I think there's going to be at least four fantasy relevant wide receivers. I would think, well, three, I, w- I would hope at least, but you know, like maybe four. And then he's going to have a tight end that with uh, Dolchich, that's going to be very interesting. And, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a good group. Uh, All right, uh, so together. Yeah. going into the weapons of the team, you know, Denver's offensive line is not the best. It could use a little bit of help. It's kind of middle of the back. It's not, it's not the worst. It's not the best. You know, my whole status is just go get the best offensive line, especially when you get a, a quarterback like Russell Wilson who's getting a little bit older, you know. Um, he's not a spring chicken anymore, so just go get offensive line help. You know, it would have been nice to have that 29th overall pick to go get an offensive lineman late, but you've got second-round picks still. Um, so you can you could definitely make something work there. Um, free agent as well. Just, just make sure that this offensive line. But the other big draw for Sean Payton is going to be the free agents. P- people are going to want to come play for Sean Payton. And, um, you know, it's, it's not always the best guys here, but uh, I think that they're going to be able to draw in a lot more players than what they normally would have, you know, with a Nathaniel Hackett or somebody like that. So um, there's that piece of it as well. But again, offensive line, middle of the pack could use a little bit of help, but everywhere else man there's really not many holes on this entire roster the defense is what it is it's a very very good defense it's very young um 
for the most part, you know, it's getting a little bit older in some spots, but nothing, nothing egregious. Right. So, um, Justin mm-hmm. Simmons is probably their oldest player. And he's from 2016. So, you know, he's getting up there a little bit, but not, not the oldest player there yet on the offensive side of the ball, Javante, it all depends on his health. He might not be healthy to start the season, but they've got Chase Edmonds. They've got Mike Boone, a re, re a Latavius Murray reconnection with Sean Payton. Um, yeah. So that would be kind of interesting. Marlon Mack, they've got enough guys, and they could even take somebody you know in the third round of this upcoming draft mm-hmm. and really fill that that hole completely, which would be a little bit of a knock for Javante Williams, but they got to get a guy that they can trust in there. Greg Dulcich, Al, Albert Okwebenam, um at tight end. Russell Wilson is your quarterback. We've seen Russ, and you know, before he came over to Denver, was very highly regarded as a potential Hall of Famer. So there's a lot of potential there and a lot of talent. And then you get to the wide receivers. You got Jerry Judy, Cortland Sun, Tim Patrick, who unfortunately tore his ACL last year, but was yeah. very possibly the number one wide receiver for this team. Um, he had a very good connection with Russ based on everything that everyone was talking about. And then KJ Hamler is the is the fourth guy. They could even draft a guy. Again, you could go round two offensive lineman, round three um, wide receiver, maybe running back, and then round four wide receiver, kind of flip-flop that. And, or, you know, you go target a Juju Smith-Schuster or something like that. And this this offense could be humming, man. They, they already have good players. Um, and, again, you look at Sean Payton's offensive schemes, and that's where I think that they're going to make this offense just nasty. It's going to be disgusting yes. to, to really from a fantasy perspective. So um, if you're looking at the wide receivers, now assuming that they bring in another running back, you know, maybe they have a – it'd be hilarious if they brought in Jameer Gibbs, by the way. Uh, yeah, because really of the be. the Alvin Kamara comp Kamara. that he continues yep. to get, um, so <laughs> you know you got Latavius Murray and and Javante Williams and uh, Jameer Gibbs, so that'd be pretty interesting there. But looking at the wide receivers, who are you most excited about? Is it Jerry Judy? I would say Jerry Judy. Yes, um, I I think we figured out that at least for me that Jerry Judy and um, Cortland Sutton. Like can be the guy, but I think they're solid dudes. Um, you know, I, I don't really think either of those are really the alpha in that uh-huh. offense. So, you know, personally, but I mean, I I, th- I think this really helps. Um, it's going to help Jerry Judy. I mean, I I, I I can really see Jerry Judy. Like, I mean, I mean, he doesn't necessarily have the as much size as like a Michael Thomas, but I can see him doing a a, a lot of the Michael Thomas stuff. And, <laughs> Is he and, the new and, and, slant and, boy? You know, Hey, <laughs> as as long as he catches the ball, that's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I'm just, you know I you know and you know I I really like Horton Sutton. You know I I can feel he can be a really solid t- you know a really solid two. Um, I I'm really excited to see what Tim Patrick can do. I yeah, he's, I agree. I I I, I, I think he's going to be very undervalued, and he's going to be a, a a real steal in the steal in draft. So. You know, you were talking on Jerry Judy a little bit there, and I get it. Jerry Judy is a little bit smaller than Michael Thomas, so it's not a one-to-one comp there. But the reason why I'm so excited about Jerry Judy, he played technically 15 games, but you take out the two games he played less than 40% of snaps, um, three games he played less than 40%. There's one game where he played one snap, um, and it counts as a game played because he started whatever. So you take out the three games that he played less than 40% of snaps, I mean – he had oh what was it um 93 targets he had um 62 catches for about 900 yards so you know in what is that 12 games that is pretty yep. good man that is really really good he had six touchdowns as well he really started getting it going in the second half again after Nathaniel Hackett got Um, hand the whole team just looked a lot better Russ looked a lot better as well so that's why I believe that there's so much potential here and that's why I really really feel like Russell Wilson is an amazing buy um, right now for fantasy football Mm -hmm. I was kind of buying him before the Sean Payton news um, in in anticipation of them going to get Sean Payton just because it made too much sense uh, because of the the Russell Wilson contract so 
Mm-hmm. I think I think Russell Wilson and Sean Payton is going to be a very good combination. And I believe if you're looking at all of the all of the news stories that are still kind of floating around out there, like there was the the press conference that just came out where Sean Payton was talking um, in in the press conference announcing to the whole world that he's the new coach and all that stuff. He won. It was pretty baller where he just ragged on um nathaniel hackett and the whole crowd counting down the play clock which is pretty funny um and he said that's not going to happen here he felt very confident about that which i agree but you know he also talked about russell wilson and his um like personnel coach like his personal side coach being in the building Mm -hmm. and having access and all that stuff and he said that's not going to happen and a lot of people took that as a shot at russell wilson it's like no he's just not going to let him in like why i don't know why people are looking at that as it's a bad thing like okay he's he's putting his foot down and russ if he respects sean payton which everything kind of points that he does he's not going to do it like i don't understand not everything has to be a drama right so um i think that that right there is going to keep russell wilson down people are like oh he's just never changed not going to change not going to be fixed so i think that there's still an awesome buying window for russell wilson for fantasy football and again i i disagree with you i think jerry judy has the potential to be a top 10 guy um that's what he was kind of drafted to be you know he you was. go back I to agree. his rookie class he was the one-on-one most people took over cd mm-hmm. lamb um, because of his potential and we're kind of now seeing it he's only 23 years old he was very young when he came out he's still very very young as well um and yeah those stats do not lie he has so much potential it's just raw right and we just need to see it um kind of put together he has been banged up a little bit but again it's kind of freak injuries as well so um Cortland Sutton I agree with you is definitely a two uh Tim Patrick or whoever they bring in there it, they could, should still be fine, um, but yeah. I don't think that they're going to be super fantasy relevant. They're going to have s- spot starts here and there. Um, mm-hmm. Same with the running backs. You know, Javante, if he can come back, he, he should be fine. But I really anticipate them drafting someone like a Jameer Gibbs, uh, maybe a Kendra Miller later on in this draft, um, which would be awesome for fantasy football. And again, look at what they were able to do in New Orleans. It doesn't necessarily have to have to be, oh, one guy gets the whole workload. It can be two yep. guys that are going to be very fantasy viable for this team. So um, I am very excited about Sean Payton. Any last thoughts on him? Uh, I mean, I'm I am very excited about him. I well, I how I see it is is if Russ can play very well like he did the last three or four games without Hackett, you know, mm-hmm. I just imagine what he can do with Sean Payton. So yep, I, I I you know if 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 in Dynasty I would be buying him anywhere I can because I mean I I don't think he's necessarily going to be super cheap as what he was during the season, but he's still going to be probably a little cheaper because people may may have that bitter taste in their mouths yeah yep so we'll see so and just for reference to um russell wilson's last four starts for fantasy football well it doesn't really matter i'll just read the stats um against kansas city 23 of 36 for 247 and three um one interception he had 15 for 27 and 214 for one with three picks he's got to get those picks under control there against the rams um That was like his worst one of these last four. Uh, 26 of 38 against Kansas City again uh, for 222 yards, one and one. And then weeks 18 against the Chargers doesn't really count, but 13 for t- of 24. Like he was doing all this with less than 30 completions, which is just wild for 283, three touchdowns and one interception. So, you know, still had a, an issue with the interceptions, especially the last couple games. Like I think a bulk of his interceptions came. Uh, he had five interceptions or six interceptions in the last four games, but he also had eight touchdowns. So, you know, Considering what he, how slow the season started, he was he was definitely w- taking more risk and opportunity there um, against Kansas City and, and the Chargers and those guys. So uh, definitely has some potential, and I think that the offensive schemes that Sean Payton are, is going to come up with is going to definitely help him quite a bit. Agreed. All right, so the next guys we're going to talk about here are going to be Nathaniel Hackett and Mike LaFleur. So these two kind of go together. These are new OCs across the league. Um, Mike LaFleur was with the New York Jets. 
got fired after the season, gets picked up by the Rams to go work under Sean McVay. Not really a, a substantial change there. He's not going to do anything for the Rams. Uh, it's going to be all no, Sean pa- or, or Sean McVay, Sean Payton, Sean McVay. Um, he's going to be calling all the plays still over in in LA. But the reason why I want to talk on these two guys together, Nathaniel Hackett gets hired by he gets fired by Denver. It, the, this whole thing is just all interconnected, right? Uh, Nathaniel yes. Hackett gets fired by Denver to get Sean Payton. Uh, Michael Floor gets fired so that Nathaniel Hackett can go over there. And now Nathaniel Hackett is in charge of Green or Green Bay. He's in charge of Damn. the New York Jets. And the reason why this is so impactful is I think that they're going to – this is another reason why I think that they're going to go get Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Now, the impacts of this are very interesting because Nathaniel Hackett as a head coach sucked. He was terrible. It's hard to say, again, going back to Denver, we have no idea if Nathaniel Hackett was the issue or if it was Russell Wilson. He's now in charge of an offense again in the Jets, but he's not the head coach. So he gets a lot of that responsibility taken off his plate that now he can kind of focus on the offensive side of the ball a little bit more. I also think that he's going to be getting someone like an Aaron Rodgers who, you know, doesn't necessarily need all the creative plays as much. You know, he's he's going to be able to kind of mm-hmm. come up with some stuff on his own a little bit more there, have a little bit more input into it. Those two have a history together and, you know, it's definitely an, a risk, though, for the for the fantasy value of all the Jets players because you're taking this guy that we all thought was egregiously bad um, as a head coach for Denver, and you're putting him in charge mm-hmm. of an entire offense with a lot of potential. You know, you got Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, a lot of these guys. So, um, what are your thoughts on Nathaniel Hackett coming in and replacing Michael Floor? And I'll let you I talk think, for a minute here because yeah. my, Michael Floor, I have a lot of strong opinions on him. I did not like him whatsoever. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't think Michael Floor did a very good job in in uh in in New York, you know, I I, I kind of felt that Sala was trying to just get his guys that were in San Francisco and 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 kind of and kind of run with them a little bit. Um, I'm not a super big fan of Hackett. You know, I kind of feel that we have these generational quarterbacks that that we see, and then these OCs get head coaching jobs. You know, like for instance, like with Adam Gase that we saw a few <laughs> years ago with the Jets, and then well with Miami, and then the Jets, then you know, um, it turns out poorly. And that's kind of where I think Hackett was, you know, I feel he needs to stay in his lane being an OC. And I really think the the Jets really want to get a starting, like a competent quarterback other than Zach Wilson and yep. Joe Flacco, you know? Um, so I, I think, I think that's their biggest goal is to get uh, Aaron Rodgers, which I think, which honestly I think was Denver's goal last year. I agree. The stuff just didn't work out how yep. how how it how it how how they thought it did, yep. you know. And then, you know, and then Rogers came back to Green Bay, and you know, I mean, he went in his little four day hut or whatever he did last year. No, that last year, year was a, a two week uh, crapping and vomiting binge. So, yes, dude's a weirdo, yes. man. Like, wh- he's, why? He's very interesting. He is. I mean, he's a good quarterback. Weird person. Not a great person. Yeah. Yeah, so but that's beside the point. You know, all we're talking about is the fantasy value. Yeah. So you know, you know, I, I, I think he, I think he helps the value of these wide receivers because if you would have a Zach Wilson, like you're not sure what version of Zach Wilson. If you're they can get Aaron Rodgers, though, that's the problem. Right. So I mean, I mean, I mean, I think the Jets are going to get go get somebody. I agree. You know, agree. some 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 vet maybe maybe it's Jimmy G maybe they go after Derek Carr you know some some, some something like that like they're going to get somebody that is more mm-hmm. competent than Zach Wilson and that I feel better about because at least you can have some stability at the quarterback position and some more stability with your wide with, with your younger wide receivers and they won't be complaining every other week that they didn't get the ball enough it is a pretty funny story. Did you see the one about Elijah Moore going up to uh, Michael Thor in practice and telling him that he sucks and he with a lot yes, of expletives and uh, yes, like you're the yes, worst, you you effing suck and all this stuff. It yes. is pretty funny to my in my opinion because like I so my thoughts, Michael Thor sucked. 
He really did. Uh, Elijah Moore is not wrong here. Uh, um, when you look at what Michael Ford was doing, so, you know, from a fantasy perspective, Garrett Wilson was fine. Yeah, Brees Hall was fine. But from a real-life football perspective, Michael Ford's problem was he created a game plan and he ran that game plan, whether it worked or didn't work, and he had no ability to adjust anything whatsoever, and it was terrible. And, you know, whatever his thoughts are on Zach Wilson, they drafted Zach Wilson, first off. They drafted him. You yep. put him in the worst possible situation every single week because say what you want about Zach Wilson. He's not that good right now, which is fair. But every time he's succeeded so far in the NFL, it's been throwing the 50-50 ball to guys on the sidelines, you know, the guys that he trusts. He doesn't really, and this is a problem, don't get me wrong, it's a problem that he doesn't like just throw to the wide open guy. That's not what he does. You should be doing that, but he doesn't do that. He likes to throw the 50-50 ball. Well, all Michael Floor did was scheme open guys, which... Granted, is good, but you never played to Zach Wilson's actual strengths. You tried to conform yeah. him to your system. That is bad coaching. It's bad. It's just it you it cannot is. do it that is. in the in the modern NFL. If you want to be a good teacher, you have to find a way to get through to your student, and that is Zach Wilson. Now, losing Michael Floor, I think, is a bump up for everybody, even if it is Nathaniel Hackett. I don't think that Nathaniel Hackett is an otherworldly play caller or anything like that. No, but no. I do believe that he is going to lock in Aaron Rodgers for this team, which is going to have a positive impact on everyone in the team. Like there's no way that they're going to go with a veteran guy like a Derek Carr or Jimmy Garoppolo with a first time offensive coordinator. Because if you go back to when Nathaniel Hackett was an offensive coordinator in Green Bay, it was under Michael Floor or Matt LaFleur? Matt, Matt LaFleur. Uh, the, the other LaFleur, the brother there. Um, so, you know, he didn't have all the play calling. Like, he wasn't in charge of that. That was Matt LaFleur. So, we've never actually seen Nathaniel Hackett run in a successful offense. Pairing him with a guy that's an unknown, right, an, an unknown veteran quarterback that's not Aaron Rodgers, it's just too risky for the Jets. They want stability, like you mentioned before. Mm-hmm. And I think that the only way that you're going to get that is by trading for Aaron Rodgers. It makes yeah. all the sense. We've talked about it a thousand times already. Um, he's older. It gives Zach Wilson a mentor. And, you know, it just gives you stability in the room. I think that they're going to get Aaron Rodgers. And because of that, Nathaniel Hackett is going to, you know, we're going to have to evaluate what he does. But, I think that it's going to be good for all the fantasy options in this team. And it's not directly because of Nathaniel Hackett. We'll have to watch what his play calling can do. But I think that it gets them Aaron Rodgers, and that's going to be a massive uptick for everybody else. So, um, Yeah, 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 no, I I agree with that. I think the biggest downfall the Jets, one of the bigger downfalls the Jets had this this past year was that their offensive line got hurt a lot. Yep, yep, yep. And and, 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 and their, and their, and their, and their younger linemen got hurt, you know, you, mm. you, you know, like, you know, um, you think of the giant tackles name that they have. Oh, uh, Mickey Becton. Yeah. Mickey, and then, Mickey. you know, Mackay Becton. Mackay, whatever. Um, yeah. Mickey. Yeah. 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 And then, <laughs> and then Elijah Vera Tucker got hurt. Yep. You know, like those guys got hurt, which were their cornerstone pieces. Mm-hmm. So, so hopefully those guys come back healthy and, I think they'll have a better shot of competing. I don't want them to. I, don't, I honestly don't want them to compete in the AFC East. I, I mean, enjoy them being the laughing <laughs> stock, but I, I do. I enjoy You're it, a but, Dolphins fan. But, I'm a, a Patriots fan. I yeah, mean, they've. So, I feel bad for them at this I point, know. though. I, I just feel bad for them. I don't. Them. I, I, I don't <laughs> because they make their own mistakes. But yeah, just, fair enough. So, all right. So that's our thoughts here on the OC change. It's not as big, but it is pretty impactful. Again. Um, mm-hmm. Michael Floor going over the Rams means nothing for fantasy. I agree. It's still going to be Sean Payton. Um, yep. The the Rams' biggest problem is just talent on the team uh, versus yeah. the play calling. But yeah, yeah. I think that um, Sean Payton is definitely a big change for Denver. Nathaniel Hackett is going to be good for the Jets, and that's only going to be because they are going to be able to get 
Aaron Rodgers. That's my prediction. I'm going to be sticking by it um, until we see anything else. So that said, Dale, any last thoughts before we get out of here? All right, that said, if you're following, please like, like, comment, and subscribe on the video wherever you're listening to it. It just helps us out. We're trying to get to more people, reach more more people out there. Um, we appreciate all you guys that tuned in. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin Dale on Twitter at Dynasty underscore Dale. Hit us up on Twitter, on YouTube, wherever you're looking. Uh, if you need any questions answered, any advice, hit us up, and we'd be happy to help you all season long. Um, we're going to be putting out the later round of the Superflex uh, startup draft here later this week. Go check that out. Um, pretty good value. And then we've got a lot of content coming up this whole off season. So I'm excited to bring it all to you. We're going to get through the coaching changes here this week. Uh, we're going to be talking about all these guys, Frank Reich, D'Amico Ryans, and some of the other offensive coordinator changes as well. Um, we're excited about that. So thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good night.